Hello, everyone. Today I'm presenting a package GMeta, which conducts efficient meta analysis based on confidence distribution. This is a joint work with Professor Shea from Statistics Department at Rutgers University and Dr. Yang and Mr. Chen. I also would like to thank National Science Foundation for their support for this work. I will first introduce briefly the concept of confidence distribution and describe the procedures that you that we can use the confidence in, uh, distribution to conduct meta-analysis. Then I will concentrate in demonstrating the usage of GMeta package. As we all know, with advancement of technologies in connecting, storing, and accessing information, we are getting exploding amount of data every day. As a result, we need efficient processing mechanism for meaningful results. Meta-analysis is one of such tools, and it focuses on combining results, analysis results from multiple separate study. And it has been proven that meta-analysis can make more reliable inference from combined results than from just by using individual studies. With large amounts of literature, meta-analysis still remains an active research area in both applications and the theoretical foundation. Among the theoretical foundation, confidence distribution is a function of sample data to present confidence intervals of all levels. With that, with that, or uh, confidence distribution simply, we call it as CD. We can answer many questions in statistic, statistical inferences, such as we can use confidence distribution to get point estimate or confidence or interval estimate or density estimate. So here are the some typical examples. For example, when we use a normal sample size n, the distribution estimate is a normal distribution. Use the sample mean as the distribution mean, and the one over sample size as the distribution variance. With that, we can derive the point estimate as well as the confidence interval at any level that you want. In particular, we are using confidence distribution in, conduct, in conducting meta-analysis. There are a few reasons for doing that. CD contains much richer information than a single point estimator or interval estimator. And it also covered a variety of scenarios or cases with supporting series. The key steps to construct uh, meta-analysis with CDs are very straightforward, at least in concept. First, we summarize information using CD in each study, then combine information from different studies from the combination of those CDs. Here is a, a generic recipe for combining individual 
independence series. And uh, the recipe is in equation number one. Here, H I, for example, H1, H2 to HK, is the individual CD for I's study, and HC is the combined CD. And GC is a function, is a non-decreasing and a continuous function in every coordinate, one for each study. Okay. And we'll discuss some choices of of uh, <clears throat> sorry, so often uh, we use two choices for the G function. Okay, one is a weighted sum of mono uh, mono uh, monotonic functions a a zero. The other one is a bit much simpler, simpler, simplified version of weighted sum of coordinates which is in here, equation number three. And we will discuss some choices of weights and um, monotonic function A used in G-meta package. In the first case, we use p-value for each study and the unit weights and the log functions. Then we can get the combined p-values for case studies right here. And this is exactly the result from Fisher's method. And when we use inverse of cumulative distribution function for normal random variables, when we combine those p-value, the result right here is actually the Stoffer's method. Okay. Well, CD combination framework can also include the results from fixed effects and uh, meta-analysis. Here is the details. And uh, I, uh, I will um, skip some details in the interest, interest of time. The, the deduction of the result is quite straightforward as long as we specify the combination function. Besides the fixed effect meta-analysis, almost all existing methods of information combination can be achieved in the CD aggregation framework. Here is the list. Uh, so they describe in details by some of the papers are listed here. So this just give try to uh, give you uh, a, a, a impression that uh, the CD combination framework is quite generic. And beyond those existing method, the CD combination method is able to expand to include robust meta-analysis. So the first meta-analysis, the robust meta-analysis is for studies with a large number of subjects. And we downweight studies 
set far from the majority by using adaptive weights. By doing so, we can obtain a robust estimate of the true parameter. And the second type of robust analysis, uh, meta-analysis is with large number of studies, which can be considered as an extension to the traditional random effects model. Here, the two parameters of study come from a population, which is a mixed population. It's a, it has a regular part and a contaminated part. A combined CD is proposed to robust estimation by uh, with protection against possible model uh, misspecifications. And we will see an example of both robust meta-analysis by using, by using CD. All free work uh, in GMeta also can conduct exact inference of for two by two tables with zero cell counts. Without, we don't need to use the conventional approach uh, to pre-processing the tables, such as adding continuity corrections of, of, of half or using the large sample approximation. So uh, with all the quick introduction of the groundwork that I explained so far, now I'm ready to explain she made a package which actually mimic the structure of the GRM function in R. For example, the argument family in GRM is corresponding to GC in GMeta. And the link is mapped to weights in GMeta package. And GC and weights, as we explained a moment ago, uh, they are the key components of the combination function for CD. And the GMeta can conduct a classic classical p-value com combinations, as well as meta-analysis with fixed effects, random effects, robust meta-analysis, and exact analysis. The package, you, we can download the package from Crane. There are a few key arguments in the gmeta function which we will take a close look at method and the link func in a moment. The other arguments are GMI, which is for the study, which is for the summary statistics. And the GMO X grid is for the range and the grid points to evaluate the combined CD. To demonstrate the package, we include the author data set in the GMeta package. And this data set has 41 randomized trial of a treatment for stomach cancer uh, ulcers. Now, uh, let me sh uh, first show the p-value combination example. And to get ready, we first make continuity corrections by adding, by imputing 0 0.5 to zero events right here. Then calculate, then calculate the log odds ratio. And 
and their standard deviations for each study. Then use those results to compute p-values for all studies. Okay. Then the normal method uh, and the typical method in combining p-values can be simply implemented by using the gmeta function and the specify method with method of normal or method of tippet. Then you, you can print out the combined p-values for all the study. And the GMeta can support Fisher, Stotter, Stoffer, Tippert, Max Sum, what uh, five methods in the p-value combination, and the, the result is shown in here. For model-based meta-analysis, such as fixed or random effects meta-analysis, we need to specify a few arguments. For example, method. This is for the assumption of meta-analysis model and meta-analysis model. For example, uh, DL estimator or VML estimator. And the second one is a link func. This is for A0 function in a combination of, uh, framework. So the default value is inverse normal CDF. Another choice is for example, can be inverse Laplace CDF. And for the fixed effect meta-analysis, we use individual, we use individual odds uh, ratio and a standard deviation and the default uh, link found of inverse normal CDF, inverse normal CDF. And we can get the combined CD from which some estimates can be obtained. For example, mean, median, standard deviation, low and upper bound of confidence intervals. Okay, here, here is the result from the fixed effect meta-analysis for all the studies. And you can get the combined CD, right? And from the combined CD, which is a distribution function, and uh, you calculate the mean and median and the confidence, lower bound, upper bound. Those are all can be used to estimate the common odds ratio. Random effects models are also easy to fit. We only need to select uh, an appropriate method argument. For example, we use the Simonia and the LART, the uh, AL method, and the restricted maximal likelihood method in this example. And the result from those two methods are quite 
flows. Right. A function call in Gmeta is very simple. And the uh, only thing you need to change is the method and uh, you specify the grid, grid points and uh, the result can be printed out by the summary function, the usual sub summary function. For robust meta-analysis, we only need to change the method to be either fixed, robust one, or random robust two respectively to compare the combined CD from robust and non-robust approach. This is the, the fixed fair model, okay? And the, the one with the dashed line is the robust version of meta-analysis. And for the random effects model, uh, same, uh, we use the same line type to indicate the CD from robust and non-robust method. And what we can observe for those two plot is the combined CD from robust method is a little wider than the non-robust method. And this is to uh, explain that uh, robust method uh, we trade efficiency uh, for robustness. Okay. In here, I'd like to demonstrate an effectiveness of robust meta-analysis. So we construct and contaminate the data with outlier studies. So we basically modif uh, multiply the odds ratio in study 5, 13, 14, 22, 35, and 41 by 10. Okay, those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of the original, I think, 41 studies. Okay, only those files, five, uh, six study, we motive, uh, uh, make those odds ratios our liars. Then we use uh, random effects analysis regular random effects analysis, uh, meta-analysis, and a robust meta-analysis on the original data and also contaminated data, data with all liars. And we ex estimate the uh, uh, common odds ratio and it's 95% confidence interval. And here is the result represented in this table. We can uh, observe that the result from robust meta-analysis on this on the contaminated data is almost the same as the result from the original data. So that uh, the result is robust to the outlier. And there are more analysis uh, that uh, the GMATA is able to conduct. And uh, due to the time constraint, I would like the audience to explore our package 
documents and try the examples that we have for those cases. And this concludes my talk today. I welcome, thank you for your time. I welcome comments and questions and suggestions. Thank you very much.